Hey guys, Richard Walter here, and welcome to the channel. Now we all know the Australian Barra motor is famous for responding very well to boost. In fact, it came right from the factory with a turbo. But what about our Amera Barra? The Atlas 4200 motor never came from the factory with a turbo. But that doesn't mean it doesn't respond well to boost. We've got our 2005 Junkyard Atlas motor up on the dyno. We've got a turbo that can only mean one thing. It's time for some boost. In this video, our Amera Barra 4200 Atlas motor finally gets some boost. Back in part one, we ran a bunch of naturally aspirated modifications, so check it out if you want to find out how well this motor responds to long tube headers, a cold air intake, variable cam timing, or ignition timing, check out part one, but part two is all about boost. So we've installed a DNA GT45 turbo, a Pro Charger, air to water air core, a set of 80 pound injectors to work with our E85. So what do you say? Let's find out if the Amerabara responds to boost. So we're getting our turbo kit installed. One thing we have to do is replace the factory injectors with something bigger so that we can run E85 and boost. So let's yank out the fuel rail, change those injectors. While well, swapping injectors, we ran into our first issue on the factory one. It has this kind of plug and that type of injector. We want to put in this type of injector. Obviously, that's not going to go together. So what I had to do was take a run over to the wrecking yard, grab the right type plug. Got this from Hemi. So we can plug this into our new injector. Awesome. All right, we've got the harness for our fuel injectors converted over. Nice little butt splices. Got the new plugs. So we can plug this thing in to our new injectors. Boom. Alrighty, boost to our 4200 Atlas, aka the Amerabara. Obviously, the first thing we had to do is run it in naturally aspirated trim. If you hadn't taken a look at the video, we already posted that in part one, where we ran a bunch of NA mods, and this was the result of what happened when we ran this combination, basically stock, but with a long tube header and an air intake. It was tuned using the MS3 Pro from Megasquirt. We had the still stock spark plugs in there. We had late model coil packs, and it was run by forcing water through it. So no accessories, open exhaust, open air intake. So that's why this thing makes more power than the rated output by GM. But run in this trim, our natural aspirated motor produced 291 horsepower and right at 300 foot-pounds of torque. You can see it has a nice flat torque curve. So the question is, would this continue once we added boost? And I'll go ahead and show you while I tell you all about what our boosted combination entailed. You can see, yes indeed, it does add lots and lots of power. So what we did was add a single turbo running off of that long tube header uh, fabricated by my buddy Jason over at JT Fab. 77 and to that we installed two 90 degree bends one that included the our uh, 45 millimeter turbo smart wastegate and also the small dna gt45 turbo now for this motor it's actually a pretty good fit we know that, that turbo is capable of making 700 horsepower or so so it should work really well on this 4200 we ran the dna turbo we ran our pro charger air to water intercooler with dyno water and we also later on would be hooking up our TC1 boost controller, but for this run, what we did was just run the, the reference line right to the gate. So no controller at all. So what I wanted to do is show you the difference and show you what happens when you add a boost controller. So this first run is basically just run on the gate. We had a seven pound spring in there. It actually made a little bit more than seven pounds. I'll go ahead and show you the boost curves in just a second. 
but run at this boost level, which is about a little under eight pounds. It made 481.5 horsepower. Peak torque checked in at also 481 foot pounds of torque, and you can see it gained a ton of power everywhere. So our peak power jumped from 291 to our 93. 291 horsepower up to 481 so we saw a really big jump of power with a very low boost so now here's what happened though when we hooked up our TC1 turbo controller so what happens is we reconfigure the lines going to the wastegate so we have better control so basically it holds the tur the wastegate shut longer until it reaches the desired boost level here's what happened when we installed our controller running about the same boost. You can see um, it made a lot more power here in the middle. It's the red line. They both made about the same peak power because they were running the same boost out there. And a lot of guys might be thinking, hey, but what is this down here? Why did it make so much less down there? Really, and you'll see this in some of the other turbo runs, that response rate is basically a function of how much heat I put into the turbo before I make the run. So you can see if we do a back-to-back -back run, the response rate will just come back up to where the other one was. It just so happened that when we made that run, it was the exhaust was a little bit colder. But you can see the boost controller adds power because it's cold, it's holding the wastegate closed. So we make more boost, we make more power, and then out at the top where they're where the boost is matched, they basically make the same power. So let's check out those boost curves. So now that we take a look at the power difference between running the boost controller and just running the line basically right to the wastegate, here are the boost curves of those two runs. And as you can see out here at 6,000, the boost was the same, but everywhere else basically the um, the wastegate controller, the electronic wastegate controller, allowed this thing to run more boost. We basically had a rising boost curve with the reference line directly to the bottom of the wastegate running just off the spring. But the problem is that allows, actually, it allows the gate to open up just a little bit so it doesn't come up and hit that boost pressure immediately as fast as it can and then carry that same boost pressure all the way across. This illustrates perfectly the benefit of having an electronic wastegate controller. Now, let's raise the boost. Before we get to cranking up the boost, I want to point out something to you, and that is this right here. This is what we call not a torque curve. It is a torque plateau. You can see that that basically is perfectly flat. I think that that varies by one or two foot-pounds for, for over a thousand RPM. And it's an interesting point because a lot of times we'll get that where it'll actually be a torque plateau and not a nice smooth curve. And that means you're gonna be making lots and lots of acceleration while you're running a constant, basically 500 foot pounds there. But let's take a look and see what happened when we increase the power output by increasing the boost level. This one was run at about 8.3 pounds. We made 483 horsepower and just a touch over 500 foot pounds. But here's what happened when we increased the boost pressure up to 9.8 pounds. You can see more power everywhere. And again, just like when we showed previously with our run, I'll bring that up so you guys can take a look at that. So this is with no controller. And as we said, the one with no controller was run a little hotter, so it had more response. The same thing with the 9.8 pound run. It was run a little hotter, so it had more response down here, more than the lower boost run. But all that is is a function of temperature. What you really want to look at is what, what's happening everywhere else in the curve. When we increase the boost level, in this case, it was up to 9.8 pounds. So we went up basically a pound and a half. The peak power number zipped up to 522 horsepower and 547 foot-pounds of torque with basically power everywhere. Now, the ramp rate of this thing, the way that this turbo comes up, and it's important to note, this is a function of me having not very much timing in it. Down here, down here in this area at 2,500 RPM, I only had about 13 degrees of timing in this thing because we were making so many runs. You can see we got over 50 runs here. 
We were making so many runs, I just didn't want the motor to hurt itself. So we made it very conservative on the load in, and then we're gonna see that a little bit in the ramp rate. Otherwise, this turbo would probably come up a little bit faster on this 4200. But here's what happened when we made our highest run of the day, and we're gonna talk about why that this was the highest run of the day. That was 11.3 pounds, and the peak numbers were up to 555 horsepower and 578 foot-pounds. And you can see out here at the very top on this blue one, out here in this area right here, you can see the power is starting to fall off a little bit. What we were experiencing, we think, was probably the um, spark plug misfire. So that's when we tried to change the spark plugs. And interestingly enough, we did a test where we took out the one inch reach tapered seat spark plugs. These are the factory ones. I tried regapping them and unfortunately I think I broke one of the tips off of them. So we had to replace those. I replaced those with a three quarter reach, you know, your typical kind of LS plug. I replaced those and it ran the same with those plugs. Even though they were recessed into the threaded area of the head a little bit, it still ran fine. You see these things want to run, but we don't know why this thing is kind of misfiring here out at the top. I know that all of the um, area where the spark plug and the coils are sitting were just filled with oil, so we're gonna need to get a new gasket for the valve cover. We've got issues also with the water. We've got a lot of water flowing through the motor, so it's very, very cold. The other problem is all that water flowing through the motor means that I have less water going through the intercooler. So there are a lot of little things that need to be solved with this motor before we can continue doing testing and run the boost up even higher. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay guys, what do we learn from this little adventure with our turbocharged Amerivera? Yes, I know some of you guys are gonna be disappointed. You didn't run 20 or 25 or 30 pounds of boost, but we did find out some very cool things about our turbocharged Amerivera 4200 Atlas motor. The most important thing we found out is this thing responds very well to boost. If you take a look at the patented holder power boost formula, where we double the power output at 14.7 pounds, we can see that this motor, even though we ran a lower boost level, is tracking above that formula. And the reason for that is because of the E85. E85 all by itself actually adds a little bit of power when we're running a boosted motor, even before you make any changes. So there is some extra power to be had, but I like the fact that this motor with the E85 is tracking above the formula that means it responds very well to boost we have a lot of stuff to do on this motor and it just goes to show you when we do these kinds of tests junkyard motors are not perfect and this is a perfect example the spark plug holes and the, and the coil holes are all filled with oil that means the valve cover gaskets are bad we're gonna have to replace that i'm gonna have to move all of this. We're gonna have to move the turbo down. I'm gonna have to put a drain hole in it. I'm gonna have to do the front accessories so we can run the water pump. I got a lot of stuff to do before I can do more testing. The other thing I kind of want to do is I actually want to put ring gap in this thing. Now I know Calvin has run more boost than that. Way to go Calvin. He's already run 990s with an unopened motor with just boosted 85. That's an awesome job. But I want to put ring gap in this thing so we can do all the testing. We have a lot of cool stuff to test. We want to test some cams. We want to test some 06 heads, some 06 cams, some Schneider cams, ported heads, all kinds of cool stuff and more boost. I'm Richard Holder. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. Lots of more Amerivera testing coming up.